So thank you for listening to Simply Podcast. This is Melody Deco, and welcome to another episode. In our podcast, we bring you different aspects of the world of flying with the intention of making those who are afraid of it better understand the issues related to passenger planes. Today, we will have another talk about dealing with the fear of flying, and we will meet a man, um, and his name is Max, who has been successfully dealing with this phenomenon for years. And we will hear um, the path that he took, what helped him, and perhaps some suggestions that he has for us. We also have Captain Alon Perig with us, Simplify's founder, and we will give him, or he will provide us with his inputs uh, during the conversation. Hi, Alon, how are you? Hi, hi, Melody. Hi, Max. Thank you. Of course. Thank you, guys. So Simply Podcast with Max Sanchez and Alon Perig, ready for takeoff. Okay. So Max, thank you for joining us for another Simplify, Simply Podcast for Simplify. And we would love if you could share with us a little bit about yourself. We just uh, spoke a few minutes before we began, and I understand that you actually fly quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to hear, and I'm sure our listeners, kind of what has helped you and what continues to support this. So like many people, mm -hmm. uh, I got a new job and that job requires me to travel quite a bit. So in that, I'm basically flying now maybe once a month. Um, and then you sprinkle in, like we mentioned, the, the many weddings that I have this year with friends and whatnot. I'm looking at maybe four to five trips this year when back in the day, um, I was looking at maybe one per year because I did limit myself to travel. Because of fear? Because of fear. And, and you know, a lot of the places that I was going to, you can drive to. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would rather do a nine, 10 hour drive versus an hour flight. So what basically brought you to feel bad about flying? Where, how did it begin? Was it sort of a trigger or a traumatic experience perhaps? Yeah, so it was actually, you know, I took a flight. Um, it was going to Portland, Oregon uh, about three and a half years ago at this point. And there it was just, you know, obviously uh, turbulence is, is a big factor in, in what us people fear. Uh, and to me, it felt moderate to severe. Now, this goes back to perception, right? So at the end of the flight, I asked the captain, hey, was that moderate to severe? He goes, no, that was actually light to moderate. And I said, that's interesting. Okay, all right, well, that's a new sensation. You're kind of comparing, sort of comparing your experience as opposed right. to how they perceive it. Exactly. Just, so I just that, have to tell you, Max, that uh, in my 19 years of uh, airline flying, mm -hmm. or that as, as a combat pilot, I never, never experienced moderate to severe turbulence. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. So since I was never a combat pilot or anything like that, my yeah. perception was way off. Now, as we mentioned before, I used to race cars. So I'm very, I was very comfortable going 150 to 180 miles an hour. You're very I, adventurous. Yeah. Dropping down to 50 miles an hour in a short period of time. So in a car, I feel very comfortable. You know, you can take me 130, 140 on a straightaway. And I'll be perfectly fine. But we hit certain bumps and things like that. And that's kind of what threw me off. And I guess what triggered it was that flight to Oregon. It was very stormy, bouncing around and, and whatnot. Uh, so that's really where that kind of kicked in. What did you do to confront this fear of flying? So then, I kept doing then it. and today. Yeah. Yeah. So I kept doing it, honestly. And, and I also, so since I am an engineer, I, I kind of looked at the math as well. Out of the many flights that I've taken since that incident, how many have been of that caliber or worse? And the answer was zero. There really haven't been any that, that were worse than that. Um, Alan and I actually, we just talked about a recent flight of mine that actually happened to be, in my opinion, pretty bad. Uh, I'm not going to say that it was moderate to severe because it wasn't, but it was very jarring. You know, it was bumpy the whole entire way. It, uh, the landing was very rough. Takeoff was rough. And we were expecting a smooth flight. So it kind of caught me by surprise. Do you, but, do you have good flights? I mean, I would, I'm would. i guessing that every once in a while, you also have some calm, um, sunny day flights. And, and that goes sort of clear, um, calmly for you? Eight out of 10. Eight out of 10 okay. definitely fall into that category. 
Amazing. Do you, do you feel like sharing some recommendations, perhaps how you fight the fear of flying or, and how you deal with it? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that um, I suppose the fear of flying doesn't allow them or sort of to, to continue flying or it becomes very hard. And it seems like you are confronting your fear every time. Um, do you use our application um, during Absolutely. flight? What, what helps you? So that was actually the first step. The first step was getting Simply Fly to actually learn the, the facts, right? And how safe air travel actually is. You know, what happens, what are the different types of turbulence? I never knew before Simply Fly how many types of turbulence there were. And that was a big question that I had was, why, if it's so sunny, why the heck is this plane bouncing around? Yeah. And so, okay, clear air turbulence. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So that was the first step I took to really understanding, okay, this is a phenomenon, but we're going to be fine. Yeah. Uh, and I think, uh, Max, you, you touched many important points that uh, are triggers for many of our listeners, and you know about it. First of all, you, you didn't say the word, but this is a control issue. You have no problem driving at a, at a car, that is much more dangerous than flying, but you feel you have the imaginary, imaginary feeling that you are in total control where many things can happen, but, but you feel that you are in control. And right. what you did to create that control in flying is you learned. Now, getting control can be at, let's say, three different levels. One, is to fly the plane. Okay, that that's didn't w work till now. So you're not flying the plane, but there is another, and there is another level is to sit on the on the cockpit on the fly deck, see the pilots, ask them what's happening, which will give you another level of control, and that's obviously not uh, available right now. But the third level of control that is still okay is learning the facts in a way that you can analyze the situation, understand what's happening, and don't let your mind create um, terrible scenarios when it has gaps in the knowledge. And that's exactly what you did. Right. Now, people with, with um, a main issue of control are quite easy to handle in a way. Because once you have enough information, and once you, like you did, train your brain, understand it, then you are on a good path. Now, control is one issue. I think that you mentioned before, when we spoke before the talk, about claustrophobia. Mm -hmm. That was another thing that triggered you, correct? That is correct, yes. And, and how do you feel now about it? I feel a lot better because the other thing too was was perception, right? So I think you and I have spoken a little bit about the different types of aircraft and whatnot. And when I see 737, 700, I'm like, no, 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 no. That's a small, small plane. What's going on here? <laughs> I like the, the 777s, you know, the 787s, that kind of thing. But, you know, a big thing for me also, which I'm sure a lot of people go through also is the anticipatory anxiety. And that for me was the biggest part. So once I got on the actual aircraft, I was, you know what? This isn't that small. This is actually okay. I have leg room. I can see the pilots exactly that. And, you know, the other thing as well, too, is watching the flight attendants. I watch them all the time. None of them were jarred. None of them were scared. They were passing out snacks. So if they manage to be walking around, turbulence isn't that bad. Correct. And even if they have to sit down, it's very important to know that the only reason is to keep them safe because right. only people that the only people can that can get injured are the ones who are not buckled the plane will not crash or flip or fall or whatever and uh, and uh, you all know by now all the theory about it and remember that uh, if there is a flight attendant that looks gloomy or scared that's maybe because she didn't use Simply Fly or because uh, she got some bad news from home before flying. Right. And it's not necessarily something uh, bad about it. And, and uh, you 
And if we want to stitch, stitch it to claustrophobia, then I always tell people that are coming with claustrophobia that if they can manage it in, out, in the outer life, for example, go on an elevator, even with only with people, it's okay. Then this is the, the way to confront it. Free your mind from the other fears that you have, so you have more energy to dedicate to claustrophobia. For example, like Max, you, you're looking at the plane, you say, okay, actually it's bigger than a bus, it's bigger than a train, even a 737, 700, okay. <laughs> Which is, for the record, it's only shorter, by the way. It's not, it, it has the same dimensions, the same equipment, the same engines, the same wings, only shorter a little bit. I flew this plane. By the way, it's much smoother for the pilot, much easier to handle uh, because it's not so long. But, right. but uh, yeah, perception is, is something. So uh, yes. that was about the claustrophobia and people should know that even if you have the mixture of claustrophobia and the control issue and you have your mind is running simulation as what the next thing is going to happen, you can overcome it. Um, Melody, continue. So Max, you mentioned to us that you've used the Simplify app. Can you tell us a little bit about the usage in the app? Did you um, particularly like certain videos? What helped you the most? What about the chat with the pilot option? Did you use that feature? Was it helpful? Yeah, so like I mentioned before, the, the videos that I really liked were the ones on turbulence because that's really what I feel a lot of people have an issue with. So seeing all the diagrams and hearing the explanations on it really, really helped out. And of course, obviously using having a, a pilot at your disposal is a great feature to have. So a lot of times and quite often, some of those things flew over my head, those concepts. Yes. So I you know, jumped on with a pilot and said, hey, can you explain this to me? Even for peace of mind and saying, hey, what do you think about my upcoming flight? You know, do you think it's gonna be smooth? Should I expect some bumps or anything like that? And, you know, more often than not, they were always there to, to walk me through. Um, there, there were very minimal issues. You know, obviously, uh, there's not going to be a pilot available at any, you know, every waking moment. But the great thing is that nine out of the 10 times, there was always a pilot there to help me out and really put my mind in this. Nine out of 10 is very impressive. Very impressive. Do you, do you remember particularly what type, like what was assuring, what was reassuring to you um, about speaking with them? Was it the particular details that they gave you, checking the weather or just reassuring you? Do you, so do you lot, remember of, what made you yeah. feel kind of more comforted? Yeah, definitely. A lot of the pilots, they were really great about showing me the route itself with the technology that only the pilots have access to. Yeah. So, you know, I think there was a recent episode where you guys were talking about not falling victim to these websites that kind of predict the weather and things like that. And there were many times where I checked those websites and they would say moderate turbulence coming up, but the pilot on Simplify would check it and they would say, actually, no, that's not true. You know, the weather seems to be moving that way. And so, they, so they the were, Simplify pilots are more accurate yeah. than AccuWeather? <laughs> exactly. So that's exactly the point. So, you know, definitely for everyone out there, I recommend that chat with the professionals. They're a professional for a reason. You know, Alan mentioned control. And if you tell, if you, you know, walk out of the cockpit and say, hey, you fly the plane, I'm going to say, no thanks. You got it. <laughs> so let them, let them, you know, talk with you, let them put your mind at ease and they will do that. So definitely I recommend for everyone to take advantage of that feature. Amazing. Yeah, That's and, great. Uh, it's really important. And, and sure. actually your last flight, I think, was it from Nashville or something like that? Yeah. Uh -huh. you, spoke, you spoke with the, uh, with the pilot. Uh, I'm, I'm now looking at it. I think, it, yeah, it's Jim who is a retired uh, Qantas uh, 747 pilot now lives in uh, Canada. And, and Jim just looked at the weather, tried to um, do the, you know, time and position of the weather. 
and and gave you uh, um, what he could what he could tell about the the weather forecast. And I remind you all that the turbulence forecast is the least accurate one, the least reliable have, one, the least reliable one that we have as pilots because. It is not really dangerous. It's for the comfort comfort of the uh, passengers, but we can evaluate it and use our judgment and give you uh, some more information about it. Right. That's great. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, is did you recommend the app to other people? I mean, would it is it something that you feel that is substantial in your I suppose dealing with your fear of flying. Do you see it as one of those, um, you know, as one of those contributors? Yeah, I mean, ever since I found out about it by joining the group and all that, I've used it on every flight. Um, wow. So it's definitely it, it's something to take advantage of, and you know, something that I want to mention to everybody out there too. One of the things that helped me out the most is picking shorter flights, right? So. I'm lucky enough that I live in Orlando and my job sends me to Atlanta every time. Mm -hmm. So flight time is 55 minutes. It's not a big flight at all. Right. And That'd there were many time. times where I thought about backing away, but I use Simply Fly and say, hey, what's the weather like? And again, at here I'll say 10 out of 10 times, the weather was fine. Because again, shorter flight, and that eventually led me to say, you know what, this was 55 minutes. Now let me do an hour 55. And last month I flew to California. So that was four hours and 30 minutes. So start slow, work your way up, and you'll see that flying is a beautiful thing. It really is. Wow, those are amazing tips. Thank you. When we say it to them, I mean, Alon is a pilot. I'm an ex-flight attendant. You know, it doesn't count when we say that it's safe. Right. It's always helpful for people that are, you know, your peers, people that just like you um, experiencing these fears and that overcome them. It's so substantial, I believe, to sort of A, know that we're not alone and also to hear successful stories. So right. thank you. And everybody take their time, right? You know, there's no timetable to doing this. There's nothing like that. My timetable took me a couple of years, right? Other people can take six months. Other people can take 10 years. But Maybe you'll right. come visit us in Israel next year. Who knows? I would love to. I actually have a friend that just landed there yesterday. So I would love to come visit you guys. Amazing. I landed there yesterday. I landed in Israel yesterday. I flew from Miami. With, wow. So maybe your friend flew with me. It could be. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you should take advantage of it. Soon, Alon is going, uh, is, is going to retire, so you won't have a chance to fly with him again. <laughs> well, next time you're in Miami, let me know. I'll drive down there, and we'll take the trip together. Then do it. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I'm just going to reiterate what Alon basically was trying to tell us, and that is that flying is still the safest way to travel. And I would say... One of the safest activities to do these days but for many of us it's still a challenge and what we heard today is the way that max is managing his fear and confronting it which is very important um, because we don't want it to debilitate us and it's beautiful how you found a way and you're continuing to always find ways to continue flying right. um, and i'm sure that max's point of view that you've shared to that today um, is going to be very important to our listeners and I personally enjoyed our conversation very much. And I'd like to thank you for taking the time and joining us today. I hope we may have another conversation later in the future. Maybe you'll have new suggestions and tips to share with us. Of course. Um, and uh, thank you, Alon. You, um, you always seem to have the right thing to say at the right time. So thank, thank you. you for contributing as well. And thank you you guys at home for listening to us today or the recording um, or on Spotify. As always, please feel to write to me and suggest discussion items, questions, or volunteer to be hosted here and talk with us. Don't forget to follow us on Spotify and recommend us to our to your friends or relatives. And remember, there are many people that suffer the fear of flying from the fear of flying and can benefit from listening to us and using Simplify and the Simplify um, is an application. So thank you again for listening to us. Take care. 